In 2018, I had the privilege to create a full-fledged Flutter development course. We are a few years in and now I have revamped the entire course. I've updated the entire course and what you're about to see is the updated version of the course. Now, it's not going to be the full course, it's part of the bigger course that I have created and updated. I hope you enjoy this video and you'll learn something. And if you want the complete course, go ahead down in the descriptions, click the link and that should take you to the complete course. All right, so without any further ado, let's get to it. Let's go ahead and look at scaffolding. One of the things you will realize with scaffolding is that a lot of work that we had to do prior, which for instance, in a text, we had to add the text direction. You will see that all of that goes away and we gain many other things as well. So what I'm going to do to make it so that it's easier for all of us to learn as well as not having to create new project, new projects each time. What I'm going to do is, is in our main here, I'll keep the way it is as this, and we're going to change the class or the view that we're passing here. Meaning at this point here, we notice that we put this home.dart in a different folder or package, UI, go here, okay? So we're going to use home.dart or create many other UI views as needed. That way we have everything in one place. That may change in the future, but that for now, this is what we're going to be doing. So back to our home file, I am going to create another class. So I'm going to say STL. I want a stateless widget. And I'm going to call this scaffold example like this. And I'm going to go back to main here and I'm going to call the scaffold. Very good. So let's go back to home. Notice we are returning a container here, but instead we're going to return a scaffold object. Okay, like this. And with scaffold, you can see there's a lot of things we can and sometimes we have to pass. This is really good because again, Scaffold gives us a lot of other widgets, a lot of other properties that we can pass to get things done quicker. So in this case here, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pass it app bar. I can go ahead and say app bar component I'm gonna be passing. And inside of this component, I can pass all sorts of things. If I say A, notice we can pass actions, we can pass leading, we can pass shapes, elevation, all sort of things that we can pass. So the first thing I'm gonna actually pass a title. So I'm gonna say title, it takes in a text, and I'm gonna say scaffold, like this. And I can make it center if I want, to say true. So if I want the title to be in the center. Now the cool thing is, now that we have a scaffolding, if I save this, make sure that I have in my main, I'm calling scaffold, like that. Let's go ahead and give it a run. We're gonna have some problems here. The reason why we're having this problem is simply is because in our main here, instead of doing this way, we actually need to do a different way. Copy this and create a new instance there. So in this case here, in our run app, we need to return a new material app like this. And then in the home property, that's when we are going to call the scaffold example as such. Okay, because we are returning a material app, which then in the home property, we, we pass the actual view. Save this and uh, let's just give a, a quick run here. And the moment you do that, you can see now we have this nice bar app bar here and the title is scaffold and it's centered. And you guessed it, I can actually say false to centered and it's gonna be to the left. Okay, very good. Third scaffold here, we've been working on our app bar. There is another property, which is the body property. This body property allows us to set up the body of the entire application. So anything else that is around the screen. So in this case here, I can go ahead and pass, for instance, a center for now, something like this and pass child. And I can say text, hello again. If you save, you notice now it says hello again in the middle there. But look at how many things were given. The other thing we can pass here is the background color. I can say colors dot and let's say ember accent as such. Save this. And there we go. You can see the color is showing there. If I want, I can go and get a shade right of each of these colors. So I can make it really high shade of that It goes back to that. Or I can say shade, maybe something even higher. You can see it gives us a higher tone. We are able to do all these things because we are inside of a scaffold 
which gives us the app bar. And then we can add all sort of things into our app bar. Inside of our app bar, the other thing we can add to our app bar is we can add some sort of actions or buttons that we want to have users click and do sort of thing. That can easily be done by saying actions. And you can see right away actions here expects a list of widgets. We know this because we have these uh, square brackets there. And it says here list of widgets. Okay, so that means if I hit enter there, then I can add all sort of things here. I could add text if I wanted to. But the cool thing about Flutter is that it gives us all of these tools, all of these widgets for free, meaning we don't have to do a lot of work to get them. Here's an example. I can actually invoke an icon button as such, and I can pass all sort of things. Look at this, this icon button here, I can go and uh, give it size, I can give it padding. So it is a generic widget. Most importantly here, I can pass an actual icon that I want to show. So here I can pass the icon object, which wants me to actually pass the icons. And I can go and invoke any of these icons that come pre-populated for us. So I can, let's give the email there. Okay. And on pressed, this allows us to say, okay, when the button is pressed, when this icon is pressed, what is it that we want to happen? In this case here, I'm going to pass an empty function that will just debug print something for us. Let's say email tapped. Save this. And while I can see we have our icon email there. The cool thing is when you tap on this, you can see that there is this propagation of action that happens there. If I hold very nice propagation and round shadow happening there. And because I've been clicking on that, I should see in our run that it says email tapped because it invoked the unpressed property, which we pass in a debug print. Okay, all of this was given us for free, I can put as many icons as I want I can come down here because it's an array list, I can say again, icon button, like this, we'll give another icon, how about alarms, and, and on press here, I'm going to go ahead and pass something else. In this case here, I can actually pass a function or method that I create. So I'm going to go still inside of our class here. I'm going to create a private method here, I'm going to say underscore, tap button like this. And in this case here, I'm going to just say debug print, and say tapped button, something like this. And now that we have this tap button here, I'm going to copy that. And here, I'm going to just go ahead and pass it as such. And notice here, all I have to do is just pass the name of our function. Okay, I don't have to put the parentheses. Let's save this and go back here. Notice I have the new button. If you click on that, go back here, you should see that it says tapped button, because I have tapped on this access alarm. Very good. You can see it's really easy to get things done using scaffold and scaffold is what we're going to be using from now on and you should always use it because as you see, it's easy to use and there are so many things we can do. It brings or gives us a lot of other tools that otherwise we'll have to work harder to have access to. You notice also to the left here, we have these icons that are showing. So whenever you create an icon button or you use an icon, it gives us uh, here to the left so that we know exactly what icons we're using. It's very handy. It's just a visual cue for us developers. Very good. So what I want you to do is to again, play around this concept. So see if you can add other different icons, perhaps other widgets here. Remember, this it just says that we can pass any widget we want, we can pass text, we can even pass other complex widgets that we create to customize and so forth. That's another beauty of Flutter because it allows us to do all sort of things declaratively. Very good. I'll see you next. I hope you were able to add other icons or other widgets inside of these actions or widgets here. By the way, you also notice every time we add a widget or so, the IDE, our IDE here gives us a few hints to help us because as you can see, this can get really long and a lot of code can start making you a little bit confused. And so our IDE adds the end of each of the widget that is added. For instance, you can see here, it says that in this actions property, this is where it ends and tells us exactly we're expecting a list or an array of widgets, right? And here it says the app bar, that's where it ends. That way we know exactly where we are as we code. So in this case here, I can actually add another property here outside of our app bar called background color. There's many other properties as well. We'll talk about them later. Background color is just a color. So I can say colors dot, I can 
find something, maybe red accent. If I save this, go back, you can see our whole body of our application has changed. That's very cool. So you can play around this and you can even go back and do the shades as we spoke earlier. And somehow when you do shade 50, it goes back to uh, the white. So I think you have to add bigger numbers as such. But you can go ahead and play with it and see what you like. Now, because Flutter was built on the premise that we developer will have a lot of ways in which we can customize our views and do all sorts of things, it's important to understand that there's many ways to do one thing. Now, in most applications, in fact, in any app that you create, you need to get the feedback from the user. That's why we have these icon buttons at the top here. When clicked, something happens, right? So we can actually create our own clickable views, if you will. Okay, there's different ways to do so. Now, there are buttons that we're going to talk about later. There is that other widget, other component called Inkwell. So what is this Inkwell? Let's go inside of our body here. In fact, I'm going to make this actually a container first. So I'm going to say container. That way we have more things that we can do. And I'm going to give it an alignment. So I'm going to say alignment center. So everything is in the middle. And then for our child here, the other thing I can do is actually I can wrap this with a widget. In this case here, I want a new widget, which is going to be a column, okay, like this. And for a column here, actually, we need to pass children, not child. So I'm going to say children like that. Very good. Let's go ahead and format everything there. And just to make things even better, I'm going to put a main axis alignment here. I'm going to say main axis alignment center, it's totally fine. Very good. So what is this inkwell thing? Okay, I'm going to show you, I'm going to say inkwell. And there's all sorts of things we can do. Again, you can see that it gives us this idea of what are the properties we can pass along with inkwell. There's a lot of them. Think of an inkwell as another component, another widget that allows us to customize what we want to do. But the most important thing is that we can pass a tap action to it. There's all sort of different tap actions, right? There is on tap, there is on double tap, there is on long press, as you can see there. Okay, there's a lot of them. So we can actually leverage that. Now, the cool thing, as any other widget, we can pass a child. In this case, I can pass anything. In this case, let's just go ahead and pass a text to simplify our lives. I'm going to say click me. I'm going to say tap me like this. Okay. And now that we have our butt, let's go ahead and save this and just make sure that everything is there. There we go. It says tap me and then pass a text style here. That way we can make it a little bit big, bigger. So I'm going to say text, say font size. I want this to be about 23.4. Okay, that way we can see. There we go. Big enough. Now, the most important thing here is that we can actually attach some sort of action or some sort of event to our inkwell. I can go ahead and type O. And the moment you do that, you can see we have on double tap, on highlighted change, on hover, long press, tap all those different tap actions that we can actually, events I should say, that we can actually capture. So in this case here, I'm going to go and invoke the on tap. If I go like this, then I can pass whatever I want here. So I can go ahead and pass obviously what I want to happen when this happens. So in this case here, I can go ahead and say just like we did before, debug print and say tapped like this. If I save and click and you can see as I tap, look and I hold, you can see there is that awesome propagation of event there. And look down here in our run, you can see tapped it has been invoked many times because that's what we've been doing. Okay. And just like that, I was able to create my own view that is tappable. Now you can see I can pass anything here. I can pass another container and make it more beautiful and I can customize the way I want. That is the power that we have with Flutter. But just on a side note here, uh, remember that we've been adding text. Now when we add text, <laughs> we don't have to put the direction anymore, right? Because we are inside of a scaffold. Scaffold takes care of all of that. Pretty neat, isn't it? So I hope with these small examples, you are able to start seeing the possibilities of things you can do. Okay. In fact, what I want you to do before you go to the next video is to see if you can create a very nice button, something that is nice, round if you wish to do so. Uh, just figure that out so that you can customize this inkwell, which is in this case the button, really. It is a button that we customize. So I want you to customize it to your liking, add more style to your 
text, make it bold, all the things that we've learned and other things that you should go and look into the documentation so you can uh, implement those, so you can implement other properties. And one last thought I would like to let you know is that as we progress, as we learn these things, as we learn about Flutter and how to create these applications, I want you to also start thinking of what are the things that you want to build because that is the whole idea why we're doing this, right? So we are learning this so that we can actually apply. And also, it will help you solidify what you're learning. It's by actually doing. I know it's a, such a mundane, trivial thing to say, but it is nonetheless a very important one and we often forget. So this is not about sitting and watching what I'm doing. It's about actually watching and doing what I'm doing. All right, so go ahead and do that and I'll see you next. Now, although Inkwell works fine for the purposes of creating our own customized buttons, views in this case, there is another component that is commonly used called gesture detector. So this is probably what you're going to be seeing more commonly than the Inkwell. Although you can still use Inkwell, it's supported, as you can see, it works fine. But I'm going to show you the other way of doing the same thing, if you will. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to actually create another class at the bottom here that we're going to be using inside. And I'm going to make this stateless. This is going to be stateless as that. And I'm going to call this custom button as such. Okay. So we have a container being returned there, but what we want to do is actually we want to return a gesture detector as such. Again, you can see gesture detector allows us to pass a lot of different properties and objects. That's what we have with gesture detector because there's a lot of things we can do. One important thing here is that we can pass the on tap. Notice most of these events are pretty much the same as what we have with Inkwell although we have a little bit more flexibility here, right? Because we even have the owner's auto drag and and so forth. That is the main difference. Inkwell is a simplistic approach to gesture detector. Gesture detector uh, detects more than just taps, double taps, and so forth, as you can see here. Okay. Whenever you want a more customizable or extensible, a more extensible way of generating your own customized buttons, views that can be clicked and so forth, you would use gesture detector as you see here, right? Because you can even drag things down and do all sorts of things. So we're going to go simple at this time. So on tap, so on tap again, this is where we are going to have a function. In fact, we can actually write uh, our own inside like this, right? Instead of having a function uh, that we write at a class level, we can pass in inside here as well. So for instance, here we can actually put some code. For instance, we say we want to invoke a snack bar. A snack bar is another widget that shows up at the bottom. Okay, so we'll show you in a second here. In this case here, let's say on tap, I want a snack bar to show. So what I'm going to do, I can go ahead and say, for instance, final and say snack bar, and I'm going to instantiate it. Snack bar as such. Now to instantiate the snack bar, we need to pass something to it, right? We need to pass what's in called the content. Of course, we can pass background, elevation, all sort of things. I hope you're starting to see a theme here, a running theme of our objects or widgets. Object, widgets, components, same thing. Okay, it's that every time we initiate or instantiate one, it gives us the options of adding all sort of things inside of it. And so in this case here, I'm just going to go and pass it a content, which is going to be a text that just says hello again, because I don't have anything else to say at this point. <laughs> okay. And for a snack bar to actually be shown, we have to use a scaffold. So I'm going to say scaffold object, and I'm going to pass of context here. So the context is what we are passing here. Now, what is context? Well, context is this object that knows a lot about how the tree of our user interface is being rendered. Okay, so context will know, for instance, okay, how many pixels are left after we put 10 items on the screen, it will know exactly, okay, when we move this item to the left, how are we going to redraw the whole screen to make everything look good in a sense. Okay, so it knows more than that, of course, think of this object as the know it all object when it comes to Flutter. That's why we're passing inside of a scaffold instantiation here to say that we're passing the context. So the so the scaffold here knows exactly how to rearrange and put the snack bar on the screen. And then I'm going to say show uh, snack bar. There is that method there, which then we pass our snack bar like that. Let's just copy and pass that one there. Very good. And now that I have done my on tap, so on tap, I'm going to just have a snack bar pop up 
from the bottom of the screen with a text that says hello again. Now, what's important here, of course, is that because it's just a widget, we have this child where we can pass in any type of widget that we want. Okay. In this case, I'm going to just go ahead and pass a container because I want to make sure that I create a nice um, button per se. In this case here, I'm going to say I'm going to pass a padding. And for padding, you can go ahead and use edge insets here. In this case here, I'm just going to go and put some sort of padding around uh, the entire container. And here I can pass 10.0. It has to be doubled. Okay, to say around the entire container, I'm going to have a padding of about 10 units. Okay, and then I can pass decoration here, box decoration. Now, this sounds like, oh my goodness, it's a lot of things. Just think of this as all these little tools that Flutter has for us to use. Okay, we want to decorate what? Our container. We use box decoration. So in this case here, box, box decoration takes in all sorts of things. And look at this. It helps us know what exactly we need to pass in order for this to work. Okay, so in this case here, I'm going to pass the color for our decoration here one comma too many for now i'm just say colors dot and let's give it a pink accent like that and then i'm going to pass a border radius in this case i'm just going to say i want a border radius uh, to be circular and i'm going to pass a radius of this circle now because i am inside of a container i also am still allowed to pass the child property here <laughs> in this case i'm just going to head and just put a text that says button like this Okay, so we have now created an actual custom button here. What we did, we pass a gesture detector and we have on tap, the simplistic one. And what we want to do on tap, we just want to create a new snack bar and it will just say hello again. And to actually show that snack bar, we have to go through scaffold class and pass in the context, the know it all object and invoke the show snack bar and then pass the snack bar that we created there. That's all. Okay. And of course, here we have our child, we pass in a container and we do all this customization here. We use box decoration and pass a few uh, properties. Notice uh, we have many other properties we can pass, but they're, most of them are optional. Okay, so color and border radius are the most common ones or the most important ones at this point. Okay, and of course, because we inside our container, we said, well, for a child, so what is it that we're going to see written? It's going to be button. Okay, now that we have this, we can actually call our custom button somewhere. Where? Well, I can come here, for instance, we have our inkwell. I can come down here and comment all of this out and just pass and just pass our custom button like this. And voila. If I go back here, you notice we have that awesome custom button. Look at this. This is what we created. If I tap on that, it says hello again and seconds later this should go away like that and that's how a snack bar works okay so tap it says hello again and a seconds later go away and we can change the background color of our snack bar right if we go back to our code here so i can come here and say background color say colors and let's give that amber there and add some nice shade as well so save this if you click look at this Hello again, and it's working perfectly. Very good. As you can see here, you could have used, we could have done the same thing using Inkwell as I showed you earlier, very much so, because we just use on tap event, and that's the event that Inkwell does well as well. Okay, so the bottom line here is that you use Inkwell when you don't want to do the drag left and right and all sort of things, right? Because as we've just learned gesture detector, as the name imply, it invokes more than just tap, right? More than just long press, more than just tap. It has gesture detection in many, many, many other events that we can uh, listen to. So if you just want to do a very simple button, it's okay to use Inkwell. But if you want more than just on tap, just go ahead and use gesture detector. And just like that, you were able to create your first custom button. So this is the concept here. Now, usually what you would do, you would probably create this class and uh, put in a different folder or a different file. That way you have all of your custom code 
in a different file and then call them in your code like this. Okay, this is just an example. You could do this as well. That's not a problem. But just in terms of organization, when your projects are getting bigger and you want to organize better, you would probably put that in a different file or a different folder somewhere. That way, all of your custom code is in one place. Very nice. So what I want you to do is to perhaps create an even better version of the custom button. Go online and look for material buttons and see if you can actually customize yourself. Now, keep in mind that Flutter actually has a lot of amazing buttons that are pre-baked and ready for us to use. However, as you will realize, there are times when you want to actually bake your own custom things. This is when gesture detector and or inkwell come handy. All right, so go ahead and make amazing custom buttons and I'll see you in the next video. Because we're still talking about scaffold, there's a few other things I would like to show you. One of which is the bottom navigator. So we can actually add some sort of a bottom navigator into our applications. Okay, be sure we instead of a scaffold here, there's a bar. I can come down here and say bottom navigation bar like this. You can see there it is, we can invoke it. So like this, and what it expects? Well, it expects an actual bottom navigation bar. So I'm gonna say bottom navigation bar like this, gives us um, some sort of idea of what are the things that we can pass, properties and so forth. Now items is plural, which means we need to pass more than one. What that usually means, it's just that we need to pass actually an array or a list of items, in this case, bottom navigation bar items. Okay, so if I do like that, notice that I'm ready to start putting together the, the actual button. Here I'm gonna say bottom navigation item, navigation bar item, that's what we need. And for each one of these, we pass an icon. So I can say icon like this and say icons and go and invoke whatever icon that I want. All of these icons, of course, are the ones that we have access to. Let's use that one, doesn't matter really. And we have that one. Now notice if I were to go and run this, I will have an error because we can't just have one bottom navigation bar item there, okay? We have to have at least two. So I'm gonna copy this and paste it all in there. And in this case, I'm gonna pass something else, perhaps AC unit, whatever that is. There we go. <laughs> Save this and you notice, um, we have a problem here. I like to keep these errors because that's programming things happen. And it says every item must have a non-null title, right? Because that means we actually have to pass a title. That's such going to be text that I would say, and I'm going to say title text that I will say second like this, let's save, hopefully this time works. And right, just like that, we're given here these two navigation uh, bar items, bottom navigation bar items, just like that, okay? All that is for free. Obviously, I can add more than two. There should be a limit, I believe. Uh, let's see, I wanna add account circle, we've done that. How about that one? You can say third, and you can see now we have three of them. And check this out, I am running Android. If I go and run iOS, let's run that. As it runs, we should be able to see the same application and hopefully see the same thing that we see. Maybe a little bit different because these are different kind of operating systems. We should be able to see the same application running. It's running on iOS as well. We have the tapping working and even uh, the top here actions. And our app bar is also there, it's working. Let's tap this, you can see hello again is working as well, just like as it works on Android. <laughs> very nice, very nice indeed. The interesting thing as well is that we can pass because obviously buttons are to be tapped so we can invoke a certain event, or in this case, listen to certain events. And if I say comma, say on, look at this, we can actually pass also on tab, okay, a function. Now this on tab here, because as you see, we have more than one item, we have to pass an actual index of so that we know which item is being tapped. So I'm going to pass int i or just index like this. Just pass a debug again, print tapped item, and it's going to be index like this. So you see that each time we tap one it's going to give the index of the item that we tapped. Okay, this is good. Also remember, if you're on Windows, you're not going to be able to have iOS, obviously. So let's check this out. Tap that one. 
should say second. Oh, actually one, which is the second one because everything in an array starts by zero. That's the same thing. Let's type the third one. It's going to say number two. If I go to the first one, it should say zero. There we go. Now, the reason why the Android, if I tap on Android, even though it works, but it's not going to show anything because I'm actually running on iPhone at this point. Very good, but it will also work, obviously, on Android. In fact, I can just go ahead and stop altogether and rerun this on Android again. You'll see the same behavior. So there we go. Let's tap second. It should be one. First should be zero. Okay, there we go. So it's working as intended. If you've done mobile development in native code, you notice that most of this stuff you actually have to work a little bit harder to get it to work. But with Flutter, it's no longer necessary. And you get benefit of only having one source code and that would run on both iOS and Android. Perfect. Thank you again for being here. Go ahead and play around with this concept as usual, and I shall see you in the next videos. And just for completion purposes here, we're going to add a floating action button. So I'm going to say floating. Now there's a few here, but we are focusing on the first one, which is a widget uh, floating action button. And to create one, we'll just say floating action button. There we go. And notice here, there's a few things that we can pass as usual. Uh, we can pass a child, tool tape, foreground, background, and so many other things. But we're interested in small things at this point. You can explore all of those in your on your own. I'm going to look at a background color. So I'm going to say colors and let's give it a light green accent such and we can add a child. Again, what's new? We can add any child here, but in this case I'm going to just pass an icon. Uh, pass an icons. And I'm going to get let's see. Let's find mist or call mist like this. Okay, let's save this and go. You can see we have, just like that, we have our floating button uh, showing up there. So we can click on it and nothing really happens because we said that on our press, we're just passing null. Notice that's one of those behaviors. If you have null for on pressed, then the click action doesn't really work. And you can see that when I click, nothing really happens. There's no propagation of our click. There's nothing. It makes sense. So, as always, we are going to pass an anonymous function here, which is going to say debug print. And we're going to say something like, can I go say hello? Okay, save that. And now when you tap, you notice the things have changed. You notice now our propagation is working perfectly. And if we look at our console, we should see there is hello. Very good. So there we go. And of course, you can customize to your liking because this child here can take any type of widgets. We just chose to leverage the icon library and pass an icon. So at this point here, we've done a lot of pieces that pertain to material design, um, mainly looking at scaffold, and looking at all these features that come for free for us to use right away. Okay, it's really easy to use our app bar. We can add all those action buttons. We can customize our own button using gesture, detector, or inkwell. Okay, now we have this floating button there. And at the bottom here, we added this bottom navigation bar there. Here should be fairly comfortable uh, putting together very simplistic yet powerful user interfaces using Flutter. And I hope you go ahead and do so because you have everything so far, at least the basics for you to start tinkering around a little bit in depth. Very nice, and I'll see you in the next video. To put into place the concept of stateful widgets, we're going to do a very simple exercise here by building a quotes app. Now, this is a very simple quotes app. Essentially, we're going to have a button that says inspire me. When you click, you notice the text here is going to be changing. We're going to be rotating through different quotes that I have hard coded. The main focus here is for us to understand how to set a state uh, of our views. That way we're able to pass that state in our views and you can see the redrawing happening. In our case here, you can see that we're going to be redrawing with new quotes. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's go to our home that dot here and I'm going to add another class. Let's close all of this down and this as well. 
essentially all of these old classes there. So in this case here, instead of saying state less, we are going to start with stateful widget. So hit enter, and I'm going to call this wisdom. It sounds powerful. You can call it whatever you want, but wisdom it is. Now notice um, the beauty here is that using the help to create our stateful or stateless widgets is that it gives us all the boilerplate code that otherwise we would have to write ourselves. So it's very handy. Notice here we have this override create state, okay, which returns a wisdom state. What is this wisdom state? Notice it's what we have at the bottom here. And this wisdom state, notice it's private because we have underscore, extends a state which contains a wisdom type, which is this class here. Okay. And so the idea here is that now that we have a stateful widget, we can create down here, see there's container, we can actually create the user interface and also any variable or view that will contain that state that we want. So firstly, we are going to construct our user interface. So here I'm going to pass a scaffold. Right now we're not going to add an app bar. So there is that option because earlier we would put an app bar and add that. But in this case, we're just going to uh, get rid of it. We don't want an app bar. We're going to straight to our body. I'm going to add a new container. As such, we'll have a child. This child is going to be a column. Just a little bit of space. And what are we going to add, first of all, is make sure that the axis alignment I'm going to say main axis alignment is going to be center, such. And then this is where we're going to put our children. So we're going to have a very simple user interface, as you saw earlier. We're going to have a text view, which will hold all of the quotes. And then we're going to have a button at the bottom. And in the middle, we're going to have a few filler widgets as well. Okay, for now, I'm going to add a text here real quick. In this text, I'm going to say first quote like this. Okay, let's save this and give it a run just to make sure that things actually, uh, before we do that, we need to call this wisdom in our main here, right? Because we still have business card. We want wisdom like that. So let's run again. Hopefully we should see something. So you can see here, it says first quote, very nice. So it is working as expected. And still inside here, what we're gonna add is we're gonna add a flat button icon. So I'm gonna say flat. You can see here there's different kinds of flat button, a few other ones. So we're just going to go use the first one, which will allow us to add an icon. Okay, for on pressed, we're going to ignore for now. And for icon, I'm going to say icon like that and pass an icons. And I want a web sunny. You can invoke anything you want. That is totally fine, up to you. And for the label here, I'm going to just put something that says inspire me like that. Well, this is wrong because it actually has to be a widget, not just a string. And inspire me. Okay, save this. You can see we have our button there. And just like we had before, because we don't have anything in our own pressed, it just doesn't do anything, right? It's, it's not highlighted and, and we can't really um, do anything with it. That's totally fine. Let's go ahead and format everything, the entire code. Very good. Now you see that on pressed here, we are going to be passing something. What are we going to be passing is going to be a show quote uh, method. So I'm going to say underscore show quote like this. Now we haven't created this yet. So I'm going to go ahead and create a um, method with it. So there we go. Now we have our show quote here. Now what is the thing that we are trying to do here? Well, we are trying to make it so that when we click this button here, we are going to go through an array and start pulling out quotes. Now let's get that array first before we uh, get too far ahead. Now I already have this quotes, a list of quotes per se. So arrays and lists, same thing. And I'm going to just copy and paste it here. That way you don't have to uh, go through the process of me typing everything. Okay, so this is just data, say quotes here, and we have a few quotes that I got from the internet. And now we want to show this data here. Now, the first thing we can do actually is just to show that we can actually pull something from our quotes list. I can just say quotes as such, and pass um, zero. So this means we're going to go and get the first item in our array. If I save this, we should see we have that quotes Oh, I think I put it in the wrong place. Yes, I put it that in the wrong place. It should be here. Come here and I say quotes and pass zero. Or if I want it, I can pass one. Doesn't matter. Okay, so you can see now we have that second quote. And you can see now that on pressed is actually showing something or the behavior that we would expect. 
because now at least we passed something as opposed to having a null. Very good. Okay, so how do we then make it so that when we click this button here, because this is the flat button, this button here, we invoke our list and we start grabbing items that will be shown here. The concept is very simple, especially now that I've shown you that you can just pass the quotes and pass the index and go through as you click. So the idea is when you click at the Inspire Me button, we're going to increment a counter of some sort that will then be used as an index. What I mean by that is the following. So at the top here, I'm going to create a variable, a private variable. I'm going to call this index and give it a zero to start with. Okay, this is going to be our counter. So what we're going to do is in our show quote here, we are going to increment our index or counter by one each time, right? Which means every time we increment it, we're going to pass it as an index here, which also means that we are going to be able to iterate through and show each one of the quotes we have in our list. So the idea here is just to be able to do something like this index, our private, and we're going to increment it. There's different ways to increment. We can say plus plus like this, or we can say uh, plus equals one. So each time we're going to increment by one. We know that the show quote is being called here. So the idea is that each time we click, we're incrementing by one. So if it's one, then it goes and gets the second item. If it's zero, it gets the first quote. Let's see if this works. Let's run one more time just to make sure. Okay, moment of truth, click click and really nothing is happening. Well, what is happening here? What's happening is exactly what you would expect if you think about it. Even though we said that show quote here, it's being called on pressed and the number is actually incrementing. However, the problem is that it's not actually been redrawn or it's not been set as a state. The state object that it's waiting to change its own state, in this case, the index, it's not being updated. The reason why is because we need to actually set this state or set this value so that it's recognized as a state. Okay, that's why this is not working. That's why you see at this point, even though we are passing our index and our index here is also being incremented because we have incremented here, even though semantically all of that is correct, it's just not working only works if we actually wrap this inside of a set state. If we say set state, notice we have this method available to us. Why is it available to us? It's because we know that we are in a stateful widget. So this framework knows what needs to be done. Whenever you have a stateful widget, you have access to this method called set state, and you can use it anytime you need to. Okay, if I put all of that inside here now, save notice what's going to happen i click look at this now i'm going through all of the quotes now we get a problem here this is what we call the out of range error in lists or arrays what this means is because we're incrementing each time we increment our index increments obviously which means the number we're putting here is also incrementing the problem arises when the length of our list what how many items are inside here when it is exceeded here meaning if the length let's say the length of this is 10 meaning we have 10 items inside of this list or array then as we continue to increment we get to 11 it's going to go ahead and say well this quotes list here doesn't have the 11th element therefore i don't know what to do this is confusing and let's just break that's what's happening here there are different ways to account for that, but I'm going to show you a really nice, quick and clean trick to actually eradicate this problem. All we have to do is actually pass the modulo like this and then say quotes dot length. That's all. So what this means is the following. As the index goes up, so imagine that index is one, one modulo quotes length. Let's say the length is eight, nine, eleven. About what do we mean here is the following. So if we take a number that we get, imagine the first time is zero. So zero divided by the length of our array or list. In this case, let's say it's eleven. Zero divided by eleven is zero. Because zero times eleven is zero. That means then this whole. That means then this whole expression here is going to return zero, which means it's going to be the first item. So quotes is zero goes and grabs the first item. We're good. And then the second time, 
we have incremented our index is 1, 1 divided by 11 is 10, remainder is 1. And then this whole thing is going to be 1, so we are incrementing until we get to 11. So 11 divided by 11 is 1. In that case, there's no remainder, which is 0, which means this whole thing goes back to zero. So that way, we never get to that point where our array, where our index is more than the length of our array. This is a nice trick here. Okay, that's it. So if I save this now, you notice if I keep going, can keep going here. I never get to that problem ever because we can rotate through all of these items. So trick that you can always use if if you want to make sure that we are constantly going through our array and never getting to the point where we're ending. Okay, that's it. So at this point here, our app is working really, really nice. All of that because we're able to say set state and make sure you have this set state. Otherwise, as you saw, it's not going to work because it's only when we set the state. We're saying to our framework here that, okay, we need to set the state of this index. So when it changes, then it propagates this, this message to our framework that, okay, something has changed and number was incremented. Then we have to redraw our user interface in this case by showing the next quote. Okay, so that is the main idea here. And all it's left now is just the cosmetics, which we are going to be doing in the next video. So we do have the core of our app working here. So the next thing we need to do is, of course, just to make it a little bit beautiful here. So now this is the time when you can actually relax a little bit and take it on as a challenge if you wish to do so, right? So because the user interface, it's usually something more of a preference for the most part. So let's go ahead and, and beautify this thing. So back to our project, let's go ahead and work a little bit on our flat icon button here real quick. Let's go ahead and give our button a nice decent color. So I'm going to say color. I'm going to go and get colors. And how about green accent and give it a shade of about 700. Okay, let's save that. Like that, we've saved and life is good. And you notice we have issues here, uh, depending on how our text or quote is growing and you know, how many words are in our text. We have some movement that is not very helpful, right? Because we have to kind of follow our button. How do we change that? We'll change in a second. And how about add a little bit of styling to our label? I'm going to say style because it's just a text anyway, so we can style it. Let me text style. And in this case, I'm just going to add a color to be white. Okay, I think that's probably better. And voila, looks looks much better. And if I want it, I can actually say uh, size or font size, 18.8. Okay, a little bit bigger. That's, that's better. That's good, at least for us to be able to see. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm actually going to wrap the entire button inside of a padding. So you can do that easily. That's the beauty here, right? We can actually wrap things around. And in this case here, notice now we have these edge insets to all, but I want to only have the top padding. You will see why in a minute. So I'm going to say only, and I'm going to say top, and I want this to be about 18. 18 like that. You can see now we have this nice padding there. Next, I'm going to add a divider here to, that will give us that very nice line uh, to spice things up a little bit. So for our divider, we can actually add thickness, the height and so forth. So let's look at thickness. Thickness is how thick the divider is. So I can say 2.3. Um, I'm going to have to put a comma here to separate our widgets. And you can see that's pretty thick, isn't it? So I can maybe dial it down a little bit. And there it is. Looks very nice. Okay. Small things that make our application way, way better. Okay, let's continue there. Now we're gonna work on our text, the way things are being rendered. So let's go ahead and center our text here. So click there and say center. The moment you do that, save. And now you know everything is centered. That's very good. And you notice now the movement of our button goes up and down only because this is always in the middle. So that is good improvement there. And we can also wrap it all around a container if you wish to do so. So I'm going to do that just to show you. So now that it's inside of our container, there's some things we can do. So let me give myself some space here so I can start adding things to our container. Well, the first thing I can add is a width, right? And I can say I want the width of this container to be 350 and the height to be about 200. And I can beautify our container as you saw before. But before that, I can act also add a margin. I'm going to say edge insets. And I'm going to make it all, give it an overall margin of 
and I can pass a decoration. Remember, decoration. I'm going to pass a box decoration there. And I can say the color uh, to be, let's say, green accent. If I save this, all of a sudden we have this very nice card there. So it's giving something. But for now, I'm going to actually go and invoke the transparent because I want to just make it so it's white. Okay? But you know that you can change the color to your liking. And how about adding a border radius? So I'm going to say border radius, put a border radius as such. I want circular. Let's see, circular, if I can type, of course. And I'm going to say I want about 14.5. Now, this, of course, only works if you put uh, a color, right? So if you see like this, you can see there it is very beautiful. Next thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to add this container here inside of an expanded widget. An expanded widget allows us to expand this whole widget so that it takes as much space as it needs to take. So I'm going to go like this. I don't think we have expanded here, but we can wrap with a new widget as it says there. I'm going to say expanded as such. If you save this, you can see now that it expanded all the way to the top which is not necessarily desirable because our Inspire now is at the bottom. But let's keep that and keep changing a few things here before we get rid of that totally. What we can also do, notice that we can always wrap other widgets inside of other widgets. So I can actually add this into a centered. Now I'm overdoing certain things here because I just want to show you the things you can do. Notice the moment you put that inside of a center and then our problem is gone because now everything is in the middle even though everything is expanded. Okay, so notice the card now is right there in the middle. Let's say we want to actually move this. Actually, we want to move the entire screen or all of these widgets a little bit to the top. We can actually use another widget at the bottom. So we have our padding there, which includes our flat button. Right outside our flat button, I'm going to put a comma because remember, we're still inside of a list. Uh, I'm going to say spacer. The cool thing about spacer is that we can actually pass a few things. We can pass the flex, right? So if we add the bigger the flex number is, the more space we put at the bottom. So if I just leave space as this, and you can notice that everything now went up just like we would want. Whenever you want to push things up a little bit, you just put a spacer at the bottom. If we wanted to put another spacer at the top, that could also happen. But in this case, this is what we want. And notice, voila, now pushed everything up because we gave a space at the bottom. The next thing I want to do is I want to make sure that this text inside is actually centered as well. How to do that? Well, we go to our text. So inside of our text, I'm going to say style put a text style and I'm going to give a color first of all and I'm going to say I want the color to be gray a nice gray of course let's say gray as such and I want to give a shade of about 600 okay save this and there it is now I don't like this color of course because I just want to show you so I'm going to go back and just say transparent here very nice and as we are here in our text style, I'm going to give a font style, say font italic, and I'm going to give a font size of about, let's say 16.6 or 5. That's good. And very nice. Looks much, much better. And you can see here our app is pretty much done, right? We have a nice button there, and we even had an icon there. And as we click Inspire Me, we have all these inspirational quotes that are showing there. The main idea here was to show you how easy it is to attach a set state or to add a state to our application, which is very important, as you see, because without it, uh, we are pretty much not going to be able to do anything or update or, in this case, have a more dynamic application. All we have to do is set, say, set state. Actually, the first thing we have to do is make sure that we indeed have a stateful widget. That is very important. And then make sure that whatever we want to keep track of its state, we need to put inside of a set state. So, okay, that is very, very important. Okay, so now you have a full fledged application here, a, a very simplistic one. However, a strong start on understanding stateful widgets. What I want you to do is to make this a little bit better. Um, maybe add more quotes here, or maybe you have another idea for a quick, simple application. Okay. 
you go ahead and improve this application to your liking, maybe to use an interface, but I want you to exercise a little bit more on the set state and see how all that works. Should be fairly simple as long as you understand that we have to be inside of a stateful widget for this to work. Congratulations. I'll see you next. Here is the app we are going to be building next. It's a very simple application, as you can see here. Nonetheless, there is a lot of pieces that we've learned and maybe a few other pieces that we haven't learned that we are actually going to be able to tackle and learn while building this app. You see here is a tip calculator, but with a little twist. So usually a tip calculator just shows the tip, right? But in this case here, we actually have this split part of thing where we can actually split to make sure that we know exactly if we have two people, how much the total, how much each person will have to pay depending on the bill. So in this case here, it's a quite a big bill. If it's 250, what's gonna happen for one person, obviously, that person, if the person gives a 10% tip, which is not that generous, let's do 20, the person will have to pay 50, right? So total bill is gonna be $300 on a $250 bill amount, tip 20%, okay? Makes sense. Now, if you decided to bring along a friend, now you're two people, notice each one of you will have to pay 150. Now, of course, this includes tip and everything. The more people you add, notice the bill, of course, goes down because we're dividing by the number of people that we have. So it's a very cool application here. So as you can see, it's uh, dynamic. You can change uh, using a slider here, change the amount you want to tip and you can change the bill. Let's say I want this point here is just $100 to simplify things. $100 at 50%, that would be $50. And if there's four people, 37 and 50 cents. If there's one, of course, 150. So it's really nice, simple application. There's a little bit of sophistication in terms of the design, as you can see here, the numbers are really nice. There's a nice color, nice background. This is what we're gonna be building next. Very nice, so back to our home.dart here, and I'm gonna start putting together a new stateful widget. So in this case here, I'm going to say STL, actually STFUL like that for a stateful widget. And I'm going to name this bill splitter like this. As you can see here, we have two classes. Uh, one is responsible for all the state and of course, for creating the container and the widget, the user interface per se. Okay, so everything is set up here. Now there are a few variables that we're going to be needing as we create this application. The first variable I'm going to say is int and I'm going to make this private. So I'm going to say it's tip percentage, that's that. And let's start at zero. Okay. And I'm going to create another one and this is going to be person counter. And I'm going to start at one, you will see later why. And then we're going to add the bill amount. So bill amount is going to be a double, actually, that's zero like this. Of course, this has to change to a double. Okay, so let's go ahead and start looking at our user interface. So I have here, as you can see, uh, I have a screenshot of the application we're going to be building. That way we can have some sort of a guide as we go through the building process. Let's go ahead and start with uh, the main container here. So the first thing, of course, I'm going to return a scaffold. And in this case here, you notice we are not, we don't have an app bar there. So we're going to not add an app bar, go straight to a body. I'm going to pass in a container as such. And uh, let's give it an alignment, alignment like this. Alignment, I'm going to say center. Let's give it color colors that white if we save this uh, we're not running it so of course let's go ahead and give it a run but before we run let's go to main and call the bill splitter like this that way we are able to invoke the correct class so let's run this and just like that notice it's just white background which is fine Okay, so let's go back to our home here. We have white, and next we are going to pass our child. And for our child, I'm gonna do something a little different. 
Every time, this is just a little trick, I would say, every time you want to create a form or uh, have a user interface that may be a little bit bigger than the device, it's always a good idea to put that in a list view. Now, we haven't really talked about list views yet, but a list view allows us to scroll up and down. So what happens is because we're going to have a text field, whenever we hit that text field, the keyboard will show up and the keyboard usually shows up up to this point here which means it may cover as part of our user interface but with list view user will be able to scroll up a little bit to see what's behind so that is just a little trick to use at times and we're going to use right now so i'm going to actually put all the user interface inside of a list view as such just a simple one and for our list view here i'm going to make sure that the scroll direction is vertical so i say axis vertical and then I'm going to just give it a padding. In this case, it's going to be an all padding, all around padding of, let's say, about 20.5 like this. Save this. Nothing. Gonna, you're not going to see anything yet. However, because we're inside of a list view, we can then pass our children. So the children, again, is an array of widgets. So we can pass whatever we want there. What we want to pass here is we want, first of all, pass a container. The first thing we're going to pass is a container which we know now we can add width in this case i'm going to say the width is going to be 150 and the height is also it's going to be about 150 as well so what we're constructing here is our card at the top this is what we're constructing all right and let's decorate it so let's say decoration i'm going to put a box decoration and for color i'm going to go ahead and say colors purple accent like this and shade, let's say shade about 400. Maybe it's too much, 100. Okay, let's save this. If you go back, you can see now there is our card there. Of course, it's not up to par, but we'll get there. And next, we're gonna put a border radius. I'm gonna say border around the entire item. And I'm gonna say about 12.0. Now we have this very nice corner radius looking really good. Now you notice that this item here and anything that's going to be inside of our scroll view or inside of our list view here it's all to the top so we want to move this a little bit to the bottom so give a little padding or margin at the top to do that we can uh, there's a different way to do that of course but we know that we are inside of a big container which is this container here right actually we have a few containers but this is the main uh, parent container so the alignment is center but we can also add a margin okay so if i come up here i can say margin now there's different ways to add margins. I can just go ahead and say edge insets, that's that, and give uh, all different kind of margins, right? I can say only, so I can have left, top, bottom, or I can just have all around margin. So what are we gonna do here? We're gonna use the edge insets, but not all, instead only, because now I can separate, say, okay, I want left or top or left and top and so forth. So I can choose and pick. In this case here, we want a top. So the top here, I can just go ahead and say I want 122, for instance, that's zero. If I save this and go back, you can see now it went down about 122 pixels or units. Very good. Now, there's another way to do this, okay? This is a better way in a sense that it's more dynamic because remember, our app will run on different devices and so sometimes it's a good idea to actually have dynamic heights and widths and so forth. But how do we do that? Well, there's this class called Media Query. So the Media Query allows us to actually access a lot of the dimensions and many other things, devices where our app is running. So if I say Media Query like that, notice it is indeed a class. I'm gonna say dot, and because Media Query can deal with a lot of information about how things are being set on the screen, we have to pass the context. Okay, likely we are inside of a, of a widget build method here. We have that context, we can pass it like that. And then I can say invoke size. And what kind of size do I want? I want the height. Now what it's doing is giving the height of this the entire device, the visible part of the screen. That's very good. And so at this point here, I can go ahead and maybe multiply by a factor so I can have a smaller number. Let's say I multiply by a factor of 0 0.5. Look what's going to happen. Save. And all of a sudden, this way went all the way down here. The cool thing is that now 
the distance between the top and the top of our card it's always going to be the same no matter where this app is running if it's running on a tablet it's also going to be this much okay that's very good so in this case here that's too much for us so i'm going to just go put 0.1 and then we have that very nice um, gap there okay so i just want to show you that you can actually do this of course if we can say size that height we can say size that width as well does that make sense okay so what are we going to do next is let's add the text inside that just like what we have here okay to do that well we know that we have our container so that one here i'm going to say child and in this case here i'm going to go ahead and pass a column as such now this column will of course i'm going to add a an alignment i wanted this to be main axis center so everything inside is going to be in the middle and for children here this is where i can pass something like text for now i'm going to say total per person and add another text here that would say just to see how things look and you can see there it is it says total per person there is a number here. Maybe this is a little bit distracting. Maybe we're going to move to the side here. That way, only reference when we need it. So now things are looking better, and that's very good. And the other thing here is that because here we are actually going to add an, a currency, I can just put a dollar sign like that. But this is a problem because dollar sign in Dart, that means we're trying to invoke a variable inside of a string, right? Double quotes like that. So this is not going to work. Now we have to escape that. Just go like escape like that and then it's going to read this as just a dollar sign so we save this go back you can see there is the actual dollar sign very good so we're making good progress in the next video we'll continue uh, working on our user interface i want to make sure that this column here which contains this element there i want to make sure that it's actually inside of uh, a center so it's centered right so click here and of course you know by now i can center it now sometimes this is not possible meaning if you try to click in one of these widgets we don't have this yellow element or yellow bulb light bulb there uh, usually it's because you probably need to restart your intellij okay so if you don't see this then just restart your intellij it should um, open again okay so i'm going to click and i'm going to add the center widget you notice that right away everything is centered now if you save this you should see Probably no, not a lot of difference, but it will make a difference as we continue putting the user interface together. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to create this area here where we're going to have the bill amount, the split tip, and the slider. Notice here we have this nice uh, border with a not so thick line surrounding it. So this is what we're going to be uh, putting together right now. Let's go ahead and do that. So still inside of our widgets, right this list inside of this main container here let's see right there and you can see where we end the widgets there so still inside here i'm going to put a comma and add another container so this container here will obviously contain what i just showed you let's go ahead and add our child here which is going to be another column as such it's a column because i want to make sure that everything is vertically aligned so we're going to have our text field and then the split and so forth of course within each item inside of our column we are probably going to have we are going to add the row there as well so we can have a structure like this so actually this should be column i mean to say a column like this very good inside of our column we're going to have children this is we're going to be adding our text field but before i even go there let me go ahead for our container here make sure that everything looks good let's give it a margin to make sure that we have at least some sort of a margin uh, only. I just want the top margin to be about 20. And uh, let's give a padding. I'm going to edge in sets again. And in this case, I'm going to say all because I want the overall padding. So about 12.0. If you save that, you're not going to see anything because we haven't changed anything yet or added anything inside. But that will change soon. And let's give a decoration, box decoration as such. And let's start with a color the color is going to be i'm going to add colors that transparent because as you see i want it to just be transparent so it's going to take the color of the background whatever it's in the back in this case is white and next we're going to give a border so i'm going to say border like this 
And for a border, we're going to pass a border dot all because we want a border for around the entire component. So for our color, I'm just going to say colors that blue, gray, and I'm going to actually give a shade of 100. Save this. Notice we see this very nice border. Now it's not as we want it yet because we haven't added anything inside of it. At least you can see the border there. And while we're here, we can actually also add a style to our border. In this case, it's going to be border style. And I want solid, which is as you see there. And then outside here, I'm going to add a border radius so that we can have that nice uh, radius that we like. So I'm going to say border radius. I should say I want a circular and let's say about 12, that's zero. And you can see now it's very circular. Now again, this is going to be extended a little bit and it's going to be much better. We get there. All right. So now that we have at least our border set up and everything is good, now we can work on the children inside of this column. And the first thing I'm going to add a text field. And for text field here, we are going to pass a keyboard. So the keyboard type that we want to show, it's going to be a text input type. And we want the number options as such, and we want to make sure the decimal to be true. So that way we can also invoke or add decimal numbers. And next I'm going to pass a style. I'm going to say text style in this case. I'm for color. Let's say colors that gray. Very good. And we're going to change a few colors in a second here to make it much better. And I'm going to put a decoration. And then I'm going to pass a decoration here. It's going to be input decoration. Notice the difference here. Before we have this kind of different decorations when we create decoration for a container is going to be box decoration. Makes sense. For decoration inside of text field, it's going to be an input decoration. Makes sense. I'm going to add the prefix text, right? The text that comes before anything that will say bill amount. Save. All of a sudden you're going to see there is our bill amount there, but nothing is going to show until you tap and click and there is bill amount. If you want, you can also say prefix um, icon. I can say icons or icon, I believe, and pass icons like that. And get, uh, let's say money. Attach money so like this. If you save, you're going to see now we have that dollar sign there. Okay, very easy. And it's all given to us. Notice when I click because it's a text field, it knows exactly it shows all numbers and there's the decimal uh, point there that we can use as well. Very good. I kind of quite like that. I may change later. But for now, let's just leave it as it is. Now any text field here, it has other properties and methods we can call on events that we that we can actually listen for one of which is actually if you say on notice that we have a few options. So we have the on changed on submitted on tap obscure text that is for passwords and so forth, right? So in this case here, we want on change because we want to make sure that as things change as user add numbers bill amount here, we want to make sure that we account for that event. So we need to pass something in this case it's going to be a value of type string. And what are we going to do inside here? Well, inside here, we're going to put a try and catch. This will protect our application for many things. So we are putting everything inside of a try and catch here just to make sure that if this value that we're passing that we're receiving as users enter and change those values in our text field, we want to catch any exception that may happen any errors and so forth. Okay, so in this case here, uh, what are we going to do, I'm going to invoke the bill amount, notice the bill amount, it's a private variable that we created at the top here, okay, which will contain the bill amount. In this case, the bill amount, we're going to set it to whatever we're receiving at this point here, because on change, notice we're passing the value, which is going to be any value that we have added there. Okay, so in this case here, I'm going to say double dot parse, I'm going to par parse the value. Now, why am I doing this? Because first of all, bill amount, we said it's going to be a double. And what we are receiving here, anything we received from a text field, as the name implied, it is a type of string. So we need to parse it into an actual double so that it makes sense for our bill amount variable to receive a double. Make sense? There we go. So now whatever we get here, let's say 100 as a string is going to be passed in and it's going to be an actual double. Okay, that's where that's what we're doing here. Now, if something happens, what we're going to do, we want to make sure that our bill amount is not a random bill amount. 
we want it to still be the 0.0. .0. Now we can change this if you want it. We can say $10 or we can go ahead and put another number as a 10 or 100, whatever, it doesn't matter. But we want to make sure that if anything happens, we're going to set it to 0.0, .0 again. That way we're protected. Now before we move forward here, you notice that if I go to projects, I've added, without you seeing, I've added this other folder called util. So this is just for utility functions and classes and so forth. I added this hex color that dart. If you click on that, you notice that uh, it's just a little class here that extends color. So what I'm doing here, I'm converting hex values for colors. So you notice colors can be represented as a hex hexadecimal values. I'm converting anything from hex value into something that we can actually use in our application. In this case, we're parsing it into an integer because all the colors in Flutter are in integer. So that's what I'm doing here, okay? So now what, what's gonna happen is if I want to go online and find a hex value, a hexadecimal value as you can see here, we can actually create a color type that Flutter understands so that we can use in our application. That's what we're doing here. So here is the implementation. So we say color type, say color A or, or one, and we invoke the hex color, which is our class here. And in this case, we pass the actual hex color at like this, and then it's gonna give us the color we can use. That's all we're doing here. So you should have this, and I don't wanna, and I didn't want it to bore you. Um, so that's why I just coded it real quick and uh, put it in this project so you, should, you have it. So you can use it anytime you want. In fact, you can use it in any other project you want for the rest of your life. <laughs> All right, that's what we're gonna be doing. So what I'm gonna do now is, for instance, there is this text that says color gray. Just to give you an idea, I can come up here, create a color. Notice it has to be a color type, makes sense. I'm gonna make this private, say purple, and I'm gonna say hex color like that and I'm going to pass this color here so I'm going to say 690 AD6 like that so I know this color that's the color we're going to be using and notice we have a problem here no problem we are going to have to import that library okay so now you can see at the top we've imported the util hex that color hex color that dart now I can use this purple anywhere I want so we copy this if I come let's see let's close this down about how about here this purple color here I can get rid of this and I can just go ahead and say purple there we go and if I want it I can actually say with opacity again and pass the opacity so how visible do I want this color to be the closer to zero the number the in, the more invisible it will be okay it will just be dimmed down so in this case I'm gonna say zero dot or point one Finish, finish like that. If I save this, all of a sudden you can see <laughs> now we have this very nice background color there and it is a color that we created, we created from a hex or hexadecimal color, just like this. Okay, so you can go online and just look for hexadecimal colors and get those and you can convert them as you saw us doing at the top here because we have access to our hex color class and then pass to a color type and you can use anywhere. The other thing I can do, let's go to our text field and for text color here or text style, I can just change this to purple like that. Save. Now anytime you add something, you can see now it turns to that color. All right, so you learned a few things new here, and in the next video, we're going to continue building our awesome tape calculator. I hope you're having fun. I'll see you next. Next, let's look at putting together this other part here, which, which is the split component. Let's do that. Back to our code here. Let's see. We have bill amount. Everything is good there. Right where we finish our text field, still inside of our widget array there. Let's add a row. Now, the reason why we're adding a row here, as you can see, we will have to add this text as a split, and then these three items, all of them are going to be in one row. Okay? That's why. So, we have our row. There's a few properties we can pass here. First of all, I'm going to main axis. I'm going to say main axis. I'm going to make it so that there's space in between. Okay? You'll see in a second. And then for children, put a text right away. This text is going to say split, like that. And I'm going to add a style right away. Why not? So let me text the style. 
And for our text style, as you know by now, let's just give a color, say colors.gray, and I'm going to give a shade of about 700 like this. That looks good. Come down here, you can see, we can see it looks really nice there, there's split. And next we're going to add these three components there. Actually, there's more items inside there, but let's just count them as three. So one, two, three. So we're going to put inside of another row, let's say row, and I'm going to go straight to children and the children. So the first child is going to be an inkwell. We could have used a different, more sophisticated uh, widget such as gesture a widget and so forth. But remember, gesture is a little bit more complex in the sense that it has more features than we what we need. All we need really is just an inkwell because we want to be able to tap and set the state. Okay, meaning in this case here, we want to create this minus button there. Okay, so we're going to use inkwell, it's the right approach, I'm going to say inkwell, and on tap, go ahead and set the state to do something. What is that we want to do? Well, in this case here, as you see, I want to be able to if they tap on this minus, then we are going to go and decrement our split or the amount of people, right? But here we have to think a little bit through if say we have zero and we tap minus, we don't want to go to negative one because that makes no sense. We don't want negative numbers. So we need to account for that. How to do so? Well, there's different ways to do so. Uh, but for simplicity, I can just go ahead and put an if statement here. So if person counter that we created earlier is greater than one, if that's the case, then we're going to be able to say person minus minus, right? decrement by one. Imagine that we have one as the person counter. So one is greater than one. That's not true. So it's not going to do anything. But if we have two, so two is greater than one, then we can decrement to one. Else in this case here, we don't have to do anything. So do nothing really, right? Because this will take care of itself. Then next, I'm going to pass a child because remember, we're inside of our inkwell. So it has a child property, we can pass a container for us. So now we're going to construct this very nice background there, just like we did before. And as you may have guessed, that's going to be again, a decoration. Yes, indeed. Well, first, I'm going to add a width of about 40. And a height of also about 40. And then I'm going to just give a margin, just put edge insets. And I want all actually, and let's give about 10 like this. So you can play with margin. And of course, decoration, that's where the fun begins. And for decoration here, I'm going to pass a box decoration, border radius, I'm going to put a circular one with a seven, and let's give a color. And we have a purple color right now, I'm going to use purple like this. And I'm going to pass with opacity of about zero that one. If you save this, all of a sudden, you're going to see we have this very awesome background, which is exactly the same as this. Okay, now we need to pass the minus sign there. Not a problem. Outside of our box decoration, I'm going to put a child. And for the child here, I'm going to say text, put minus. And if I want, let's put a style text style. Let's say color, I'm going to put purple again. That's a color of choice. And let's work with font weight, I'm going to say font weight, make it bold, and size, I'm going to say about 17.0. That looks real good. And I want to actually enclose this inside of a center. So I'm going to center widget and voila, just like that, we're good. Notice now we have this very nice minus sign here. If you click, nothing happens yet, but it will, we'll get there. Next, what we're going to do, we're going to add this number in between there. Very simply, let's see, we have we still inside of our widgets inside of our ink well here. And let's add another text. This text here will have something like this, the number if I save this, you're going to see there it is. But what we're we going to do this number is going to be controlled by a variable that we know very well. So I'm going to say, underscore, and the variable is going to be person counter like this save, you should see it's going to see say one. Okay. And let's give it a little bit of style. Say style like that. Text style. Essentially the same what we had before. So I'm going to pass purple. The size is going to be also 17.0. 
Okay, save that. You can see there it is. Very good. That's it. And next, we're going to add another inkwell here, right? Because we want to create exactly the same what we had created for minus. Now it's going to be for plus. Very simple. There's inkwell on tab. What do we want to happen? We want to set the state. To set a state, simply we're just going to say person counter plus plus like this, right? And then child. We're going to pass a container. With again, it's going to be the same we had before. Let's give a margin. We want all. And let's give a decoration. Box decoration. We know by now. Let's start with color. And I'm going to say purple again with opacity of that value and border radius let's say border circular about let's see seven if you save you can see now we have it very nicely but we need to add the plus sign very simply we're gonna go let's see we're in our container let's give our child here and I'm gonna say text say plus Style, text, style, color, purple, font size, I'm going to say 17, font weight, bold, like this. Should look very good. Oh, it's right there, not a problem. We need to center it, just like we did before, no problem. This text, uh, to make it center, just go like that, and it's center, save, and you can see now it's in the middle. Very good. And even when you start tapping now, it goes ahead and increments. And notice once it gets to zero, it doesn't go to negative zero. So that is indeed what we want. And voila, it's looking really good. It looks exactly like this. <laughs> Very good. Very good indeed. Now, what I want you to do next is to create another row and see if you can add this tip and of course this value there. Okay, it's very simple. You can do that. Go ahead and do that before we go to the next video. And I'll see you shortly. I hope you were able to add this tip row here. If not, no worries, we're going to do it right now. So we're still inside of our widgets. Let's see, we have our center, our container. Let's see, we're finishing up our inkwell there. So right about here, I'm going to say tip like this. So put another row, main axis, say main axis. I want space in between, children. And we're going to pass, first of all, a text, which will say something like tip. And let's put style here. Color, I'm going to make this colors that gray. Give a shade of 700. That's fine. That's about it so far for a text there. And next, I'm going to put another text. And this text here will hold the total tip value. Something like 34, like this, OK? And you can see there it is. And notice we are actually in the same row. So we need to get out of this row because this has to be the bottom of split. So I think I made a mistake somewhere. Let's get rid of this. Right, we have to be outside of this row there. So let's save that and should be at the bottom. Very good. So depending on where you're putting things, of course, they will appear exactly where you put them, even though that's not what you intended. That's the beauty of programming, I guess. Now this value here obviously will change because the idea here is that as we move our slider, which we haven't created, we are going to automatically calculate the tip that is needed. You'll see in a second. Okay, but at least now it's working. It's looking pretty decently well. Let's make it look better just like this. Again, for our text here, I'm gonna put a style, text style with a purple color and font weight, make it bold. Font size, I'm going to say about 17, I believe. Looking very good. So let's wrap this text inside of a padding. And this padding is going to be about 18. So that way you can see the change now looks much better. There's nice padding around this entire uh, row. So pretty much looks exactly like this. Okay, very good. So we were able to then add this tip and things are looking really good. So in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to work on this widget here. In fact, there's two widgets. There is the slider and of course this text here, which will be responding to the movement of our slider. Let's go ahead and add the functions that will calculate the bill split. Back to our code at the bottom. Let's go 
still inside of our class. Okay, I'm going to add a first function here. I'm going to say calculate. Put it at the top there. Calculate total total per person. Now, what we are going to be passing here is going to be a double of total tip and double bill amount and int split by. Okay, that's what we're going to be passing there. Before we even work on our calculate total per person, we need to calculate the total tip. So I'm going to say calculate total tip like this, double bill, uh, this is bill amount to be consistent, and split by and the tip percentage. The formula is fairly simple. What are we doing really? First of all, I'm going to create a double total tip variable here, 0.0, .0 because I'm going to be using that. And I'm going to say if first, just to make sure we are secure, if bill amount that we're receiving is less than zero, or bill amount is empty, if that's true, also or bill amount for some reason is null. In this case here, we probably don't need this bill amount is null because Dart tends to take care of null values for us. I'll just leave it as it is so you have it. So here we can maybe display something to the user and let them know what's going on. So whatever you want to do, you can do here. Else, that means everything is good. This is where we do the calculations. Well, the calculations are very simple. Like I said, I'm going to say total tip is going to be equal to, first of all, uh, I'm going to say the bill amount multiply that by tip percentage and just divide all of that by 100 so we can actually get uh, the value that we're looking for. That's all <laughs> to get a tip, right? And to finalize, we're going to return total tip. Now to calculate the total per person, once we have total tip, it's easier as well. So I'm going to say var total per person I'm going to set that to the total tip that we're going to be receiving. And I'm just going to add the total bill. Now, there's different ways for you to do this, making it simpler for all of us. Okay, so in this case, I'm just going to add the total tip to the bill amount. And then we will know exactly what, how much each person will have to pay. And if I want to be thorough, I can just go ahead and divide this by the how many people we are talking about, right? So I can go ahead and say, divide by split by. So I'm going to return total per person like this. Now the calculate total tip, it's going to be, we're going to be calling it where? Well, it's going to be, we're going to be calling this where we have our tip because we want to make sure that this number here changes accordingly as we uh, slide left and right. So where it says 34 here, I'm just going to go ahead and call our function. So I'm going to say calculate total tip and I'm going to pass all of the variables. So for our calculate total, we have bill amount. I'm going to invoke the bill amount which we created at the top. Notice we have underscore here because it's private and this is the bill that is actually going to be used. Okay. And let's give that a new line. Split amount is just the person. Remember, person counter. And tip percentage is tip percentage like that. Okay, it's very important you put the underscore uh, because these are private. These are the values will have the current state. That's very important. Now, if you save this, come down here, things are changing. Let's make this a little bit different. You can see our tip is changing. There's something that is not quite right. So let's go back here and perhaps the, let's say calculate tip. Let's go back to calculate tip total right i'm adding this should be multiplying there we go that's the problem okay now save this is much better if you have a hundred uh bill amount here notice the split doesn't work yet um, but in this case here if you're paying a hundred and the tip is a forty percent and of course the tip you want is forty percent it's going to be forty percent of a hundred is forty so so if i go twenty it's going to be twenty uh and the ten is going to be ten makes sense okay this is another way for you to 
make sure that things are actually working if you put a number that you know 10% of 100 is $10 makes sense very good so now it is working perfectly next we want to make sure that the split also works because if we are at the 10% and we have this amount if we add one more person we need to divide whatever amount we have so 100 plus 110 100 plus 10 is 110 and divide that by 2 and get to 105 i believe okay that's what we're going to do to do that we already have the calculate total per person which does all the calculations for us so we just have to call this it's going to be here total per person and we're going to do the same thing i'm going to pass total tip uh, to simplify here, instead of passing total tip, we don't need to do that because we're just going to call this function call, calculate total tip right here to simplify our lives. I'm going to just get rid of all of this. Calculate total tip like this. And we're going to pass bill amount, split by, and tip percentage. I'm going to say int tip percentage this. Always good. So let's call total person back at the top here. So bill amount, pass the bill amount, person, and tip percentage, like that. Let's save this. And you can see now if we go to 20, $60. So 100 plus 20, that's 120, divided by two people, that's going to be $60 per person. Okay, it's now working. So the more people we add, of course, the less each person has to pay. All right, let's see if we say about 40%. Now, notice we have a problem here, which is the bottom overflowed by 15 pixels. And this is a problem that we can solve real quick. One of the ways to do this is we need to make sure that we only have two decimal points. To do that very simply i can come down here and say we never let's see we have our calculate here actually let's go to our calculate function there what i can do here is i can say dot to string as fixed like this and pass two and there we go so this is how you do it to just have two decimal points so if you put three obviously we're going to have three decimal points save this notice there we go 21.6 seven so twenty one dollars and sixty seven cents that's way better and the more people you add you notice now we have solved that problem okay and if it's just one person a hundred dollars and at fifty percent for tipping that's fifty dollars so hundred plus fifty that's hundred fifty dollars you have to foot hundred fifty dollars for the bill <laughs> Very good. And just like that, folks, we have our application working perfectly. Okay, so we can change and everything is dynamic. As you can see, as soon as we start moving our slide, our total per person changes as well as we change the split by adding more people and you can see everything looks good. So we can put a bigger number and you can see, wow, that's a big bill. We can keep going and I don't know how many people you're going to be feeding with uh, over $100,000, but you never know. <laughs> very good, very good. Now we can do the same thing here because you notice our tip, we still have one decimal point and it doesn't look good for currency. Let's give two decimal points just like we did at the top here. So very simple, you should know by now. I'm just going to copy this and go to percentage. I can just go here and paste it all in. All right, like this. Let's see, save. Right, we have issues because of the double. Uh, let's see, let's change somewhere else, obviously. Let's say calculate total tip right about here. I'm gonna put everything inside of a parenthesis and close everything and say, paste it all in like this. Save, we should see now everything is looking much much better so two decimal points it's still taking the last value but it wasn't showing there there we go 40 20 there we go let's say just two people okay maybe a thousand just to make sure for good measure and voila 
still working perfectly. Very good. So congratulations if you got to this point. So I hope you were able to learn a little bit more uh, by going through this process of creating this calculator, tip calculator. This is the basis for something else perhaps that you want to build. In fact, I encourage you to go and find other kinds of calculators that you can implement. This is very easy and you know enough now to be very, very dangerous to be able to create pretty much any calculator you want. You have all the user interface chops, you, you know how to add the colors, you now know do all sorts of things. So uh, instead of being a spectator, I would rather you, <laughs> I'd rather you be more of an action taker and this is how you actually learn, right? We're doing all these things so that we can actually build something. So go ahead and do that. And congratulations if you got to this point. If you build upon this calculator, I would love to hear and see what you do so I can so I can perhaps feature your work so others can congratulate you as well. Thank you so much for your time and I'll see you next time.